Section 20.4 Electronic Spectra of Complexes Let's look at the colors of the hexa aqua transition metal complexes. Water is a weak pi electron donor. And that's why water is a weak field ligand. Because when a transition metal is surrounded by six aqua ligands in an octahedral environment, these water ligands can bump up the T2G energy levels. That make the T2G and the EG orbitals closer to each other in the energy diagram. And that will reduce the value of delta O, the crystal field splitting parameter. With a smaller delta O, water is considered a weak field ligand. And when six aqua ligands are bonded to the 3D transition metal center, delta O is typically between 12,000 to 20,000 wave numbers. And that corresponds to a range of wavelengths between 500 nanometers to 800 nanometers. That means this hexa-aqua transition metal complexes absorb a visible light. When a transition metal complex absorb a visible light, they appear colorful. That's why all of them are colorful here. But why is this one pale pink and this one pale yellow? The reason is simple. The absorption is weak. The extinction coefficient is small. But why is that? Well, the light absorption process is spin forbidden. We are looking at a D5 electron configuration here and here. Magnus 2 plus has 5 D electrons. So does iron 3 plus. Therefore, the ground term of magnus 2 plus and iron 3 plus are both 6s. 6 is the spin multiplicity. S is the atomic term symbol. After we put this magnus 2 plus and iron 3 plus in an octahedral environment, the 6s ground term becomes 6a1g term, again with a spin multiplicity of 6. We have 5 electrons, each occupying one different d orbital. So 5 electrons occupy 5 d orbitals. And these 5 electrons have the same spin. Same here. Why don't put these 5 electrons in the 3 lower energy T2G orbitals? Well, if we do that, there will be additional electron pairing energy. And you will have two pairs. And therefore, you will have additional 2p energy. So in this case, water is a weak ligand. Delta O is less than p. So we would like to reduce the number of p's. And then we have this high spin electron configuration. And same here, high spin. So in this case, when they are high spin, the lowest energy term is 6A1G. Spatially, when you have one electron in each d orbital, it's completely symmetrical. The spin multiplicity is 6 because we have 5 electrons, all with the same spin. Let's assume they all have the alpha spin then the sum of the z components of the spin of the five electrons is five halves. Therefore, the s spin quantum number has to be five halves. The spin multiplicity is 2s plus 1. And 2 times five halves plus 1 is 6. 
Therefore, the ground term of this transition metal complex and this one are both 6A1G with a spin multiplicity of 6. And then you look at any other atomic term. And you'll find that their spin multiplicity is lower than 6. So only the ground term has a spin multiplicity of 6. In this high spin hexa aqua transition metal complex, and this one as well. So that means any transition from the ground term is a spin forbidden transition. And then if you look at the first few transitions from the ground term, well, very likely they absorb the opposite color of red, the opposite color of yellow. Uh, in the color wheel, you can find the opposite color of red and yellow in the color wheel. And because the transitions are spin forbidden transitions, the extinction coefficient is extremely low. And that's why the colors are pale colors, pale pink and pale yellow. Well, we can also look at this uh, MO distance to study the electronic structure of the transition metal. So typically, the metal oxygen distance is the same. Uh, in this column, we found two exceptions. One here, one here. Uh, if you look at this two, uh, they differ by 0 0.27. If you look at this two, they differ by 0 0.33. So this difference is significant. And whenever you see two different bond distances uh, in this hexa-aqua transition metal complex, well, the first thing you need to think of is is there any young teller effect? Uh, when you have young teller effect, the two bonds in the z direction will be different from the four bonds in the middle plane. Now let's look at this case. We have E1, EG1. And then in this case, we have EG3. So in both cases, very likely, the two bonds in the Z direction are longer than the four bonds in the middle plane. So you have four metal oxygen bonds with this 2.06 angstrom length. And then in the Z direction, the two metal oxygen bond lengths is 2.33 angstroms. The same here. You have four bonds with a length of 1.97 angstroms and two bonds in the direction with a length of 2.3 angstroms. And that lowers the energy of dg squared orbital. So this electron occupies the dg squared orbital. And over here, you have two electrons in the dz squared orbital and one electron in the dx squared minus y squared orbital. So this numbers, the balance, also tells us something about the electronic structure of the transition metal complex. And then finally, there are some uh, exceptions. Some aqua complexes may contain metal-metal bonds. Uh, these are two examples.